Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2, an epic best of five ESL Pro Tour match between the two most aggressive and high-powered players in Europe. Let me introduce, in the top right, possibly the youngest professional player in SC2. He's the youngest ranked near the top right now. It is the Danish Protoss. It's Max Pax, known for his aggressive plays. In fact, his first build, slapping a gateway out there and getting up in your grill. He likes to play. He's a, he's a European zest, essentially, in every positive and negative and confusing way. You don't know what's coming next. But also nearly equally unpredictable. And I, I would go back to his base to introduce him. But it looks like he's going to build part of it at the natural of Max Pax. The French Terran player. Possibly the best Terran micrower in the world. Giving Maru a run for his money. We'll see. Ah. Uh, could have timed that commentary better, but. It's Glenn. Team Liquid. Clem now, uh, I believe, 19. Max Pax is 17. Me. Somewhat older. Hmm, almost. Uh, 50 years now older than Clem. So. But. Hopefully I can keep up with the plays of both of these players. As almost every single time they play. Especially against each other. Sparks fly. Uh, and so do units. Especially on 2000 atmospheres. I expect aggression. Every time these two face. Aggression. Uh, I'd be surprised if we get... Like this isn't Hero Marine versus Showtime. Uh, the stable macro clinic. No, this is about throwing darts at each other while running over hot coals in a room um, in, in underwater. But they're like underwater darts, like torpedoes. Okay, so you, throwing torpedoes at each... Uh, at, moving on! Max Pax looking to see if any Reapers are coming up. Clem's doing a proxy starport Hellion drop. Yes, Hellion drop. So, while a bit cheesy, while a bit spicy, not necessarily unexpected. This is this is definitely one of the more standard playbooks uh, when it comes to early cheeses. We've seen it before. In fact, it's one of those builds that kind of, you just break it out every now and again because you can't always scout for it. If, if this happened every game, it'd be super easy to defend. But since it's 1 in 15, 1 in 20 games or so, then it's maybe just not in the back of your mind, and then suddenly the Hellions are in the back of your base, and now you're uh, one game back in the series. So Hellions spotted. Magpax walls off the front. Does he realize... We'll see if he adds... If he adds another pylon in the corner, he knows exactly the threat. If he doesn't... Ah, he's thinking... Oh, okay. The wall off of the battery here. Making sure he can commit his units. Because before warp gate finishes, you just don't have the ability. Oh, you can't easily make units on either side. And there's the pylon. So, Maxpax, he may not have seen the starport. And he may not have seen... Where the Hellions went. He did He did lose the Adept, I believe, yeah. But he has a very good idea of what's going down here. Ooh, Clem. The pylon didn't quite finish in time. Oh my god, he gets all the way around. Even though Max Pax was prepared, it's still a disaster to start things off. So far, three probes. Could have been worse, but he gets out with all the Hellions. Only takes three to be deadly. One Hellion on the wrong side of things. A little awkward, but... A couple more kills. The medevacs. The medevac itself, six probes down. So max packs, that was not as bad as it could have been. Honestly, I thought with the Hellions getting in and the Stalkers out of position, we were looking at 10, 15 probes done. But max packs kept calm. He actually finished the battery at the front and just had to kill it, but that barely cost anything. Blink Stalkers. Right now the medevac swimming with the, well, actual shark, not a space shark. Regular shark. You can just call it a shark. Okay. 
don't have to qualify it anymore. That'd be like calling uh, me a human man. <laughs> Isn't that how you describe yourself on LinkedIn? Yes, and people find it very weird. Robo Bay. Two base Robo Bay. He's thinking about a third. The stalkers do have blink. Max packs ready for aggression, but keeping a fallback option in reserve. Clem, on the other hand, going up to three racks. He's got tanks already. He spotted the stalker count. Even if he didn't see the blink, he understands it's a very strong possibility. Oh, well, now he sees it. Four stalkers. Enough to one-shot SCVs. Taking some pretty big tank hits. The ghetto blink with the prism. Tanks moving a little closer. In fact... Oh, wow. Yeah. This is exactly what we expect from these two. They're both microing units that really aren't used to do critical damage in the matchup. To try to pick off individual workers early on. Like... An almost uncomfortable... Oh! <laughs> Get him out! Max packs with the snap reaction and knocks the medevac to the surface. Oh my god. That was so fat. Clem tried to dart in, but now the stalkers can come out on the map. Now the medevac is dealt with. He no longer needs to pin it. And suddenly it's his turn to continue the aggression. Clem sending out a double medevac drop here. And then rethinking it as he realizes the, the stalkers can be at his front doorstep. Of course, both players have full drop ships here. Now, this is a little awkward. Who's flanking who? It remains to be seen. Blink and you'll miss it. Max Pack's adding vision out on the map. Clem, though, has 57 to 37 army supply. In a heads up fight, the Marines will easily overrun the stalkers. Even a single Colossus won't make the difference. How many does he have? He has one done. He's going on two. Two is a big deal. Two against Marines will be able to just slice through the army. And you'll be re reliant much more on tanks and marauders. Shield battery. A little exposed. Very critical in this fight needed against any early tank pushes to keep those colossi alive. The war prism still intact, remember. Four more gates opening up. More being added on as well. Max Pax knows of the threat. Clem moving in from the angle that he can threaten the natural and the main. If Max Pax is even a little out of position, he can easily start dropping. Batteries being added on. Clem is actually carving his way into the main. Why go into the entrenched defenses when you can drop into the most juicy target? The tanks. Wow, almost a wall here. I'm not sure if that's good or bad because Clem's going to be able to use that as well. The Colossi committing to the fight. The, the sentries exposed. The tanks laying into them. The shots double kill on the sentries. More army coming through on the left flank, and suddenly Clem can move into position to cut off all these choke points that Max Pax created early. Actually working against him now. The Colossi stuck behind one another, tripping over the front. Clem still moving in with another army, so even if this gets cleaned up, and right now it's still a whole issue. Clem moving into the third. And is there anything? Wait a second. Back at home, a few charge lats were dropped, but the widow mines slam into the probes. Clem is getting a third command center throughout this. If the Colossi hold, it might be enough, but two down. Looking for three. The stalker count dissipating. It's just marauders. The Colossus could easily get knocked over. Max Pax being torn apart. Another widow mine. A few charge lots in the main, but this is looking pretty one-sided right now. Yeah, the charge lot's annoying. Clem, still a few workers down. It uh, Honestly, we're at the point where it's almost acceptable to GG. But somehow, Max Pax, well... With more medevacs than marauders, it's going to be hard to pick off uh, any of those units. Clem hasn't closed it out yet. Max Pax doesn't actually lose that many probes. 
but he loses most of his key units, so Clem should be able to bring a follow-up attack and lay down the hammer. But right now... Hmm. Yeah. Can't really afford to lose anything, and even if he loses nothing, it's still a dicey situation. A single Colossus. Just plus one here. Gonna blink out of the mine? Yes. Oh, Clem retargeted it, so it didn't go off. Oh, abusing the fact that he brought two stalkers instead of just one. Wow, Clem. Almost an uncomfortable level of micro. Widowmon micro is somewhat unintuitive that way. But the bio army still stalled by the Colossus. Here comes the warp prism. The Colossus, the only thing standing between Max Pax and Oblivion. Another force field, making it a little easier to maximize damage. Clem now up almost 50 army supply. A dark shrine on the way, an appropriate choice. There are five racks pumping these out. Vikings completing as well. Looks like he's just going to go for the army. More shield batteries. Oh. oh, Clem. How do you deal with either side of this? Uh, the same size of army. Yeah, shield battery overcharge could help. The Colossi are dead, and so is Max Pax. Game one goes to Clem. Pretty comfortable victory there, uh, I will say. That... That did not look very close. Now, uh, what even went wrong? I I guess the Blink Stalkers didn't do much, and Clem kind of took control of the situation. But the the Hellion drop didn't do that much. He, he just kind of walked over and and bopped him. But we will see. Going into game two. Usually not so one-sided, these two, but Clem with a comfortable victory. Yeah, well, here we go. <laughs> not one to sit back and, and uh, go back to the standard playbook. But instead, sends out the SCV. Now, is this an NG Bay block? Or the way he's moving it feels like a proxy race. Proxy Reaper, likely. Yeah. The timing as well. The NG Bay, you send out the SCV a little later, because your only intent is to get there before he expands, not at the beginning of the game. Max Packs, I don't think you get too discouraged with that one. He got caught a little off guard by the Hellion drop. I think, honestly, going for Robo Bay. Ooh, that is a suspicious. What is this? Suspicious GLHF timing. If I see someone GLHF, Jimmy, can we get the chart? Can we consult the chart here? Uh, the chart is calibrated for North America, but honestly, if someone GLHFs past like the 30 second mark, especially if they're proton, of course these two know each other, but, um, hmm. But a nearly one minute GLHF from Max Pax. Which, um, I'd be suspicious. But Clem already has a barracks on the map. SCV coming in. Is he going to NG Bay block as well? He could. And he will. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is happening. The probe will scout that this is indeed going to be a proxy Rex. He doesn't know if it's a hidden Rex or if it's on the other side of the map. But Max Pax immediately started a Zealot. The Zealot can't kill a Reaper, but it can definitely keep it busy. Takes a lot of hits. Oh, Clem hits the rocks in a uncharacteristic... He's gonna... Wow. Oh my god, he's boxing out the probe! He gets it! And then he starts another NG Bay! Oh, disgusting! Disgusting! Filthy Terran! Filthy Terrans. Oh my god. Meanwhile, the probe... No, it doesn't wreck. Wait, does the probe have any kills? Did he get any of the... He did not get any of the SCVs. Filthy Terrans. Another SCV. <laughs> the probe's like, wait a second. What is happening here? Why are, where are you going? 
Of course, the Reapers are going to come back and deal with it. So once again, Clem kind of gets the better of, of Max Pax in the very early game. This... A, a, an Adept and a Zealot coming across, but two Reapers... Well, I, I would say can technically kill an Adept. And the, by technically, I mean the Adept... Unless you micro perfectly, the Adept will probably kill the Reapers, or at least kill one and be okay. Of course, the list of people who can make those Reapers work against Adepts, where they technically have more range. But practically, well, you know what? I, instead of just saying it, let me just give you a demonstration. It's Clem, so, like, here we are. Yeah. Like, technically, Reapers have more range than Adepts. Practically, that... Well... I hate you. Hi. Uh, no further commentary needed. This is disgusting. Reapers are... Like, adepts are supposed to counter reapers. Reapers are a light unit that does very little damage. Especially to Protoss. You, you do need some space to work and, and kite them back. But Oh my god. Just stop it. I died. <laughs> Oh my god. Why would you chase him? He's going to win! <laughs> of course, it does take constant and near-perfect micro. And there's no running from the Phoenixes. Phoenix is an interesting choice, but probably a decent one. And lucky for him, Clem... Uh, wait, what did Clem see? He didn't see anything. He built a Cyclone, which is kind of your middle of the road. I'm not sure exactly what I'm dealing with, but against anything that deals with Reapers, whether it be Stargate or Stalkers, the Cyclone's okay. Um, he's going to continue that production because he already has the Tech Lab. The Adept got in, which may have been intentional, but he will... Max Pax missing an opportunity for a couple of CV kills there, but does get a full scout. Coming in, he picks up a pretty fresh mule, and the Cyclones don't do that much damage to the Phoenixes. Phoenixes slip away with relative ease. Another Phoenix in production. He's actually... Wow. Mass Phoenix. Phoenix Colossus is uh, definitely an old... I don't even know if Max Pax was born when Phoenix Colossus was a thing. I mean, he was, but he was in, like, kindergarten. Because it was. this is like a 2011, 2012... When people learned you could micro more than just Void Race... Uh, Phoenix Colossus became a thing for a while and was kind of the inspiration for SCV pole builds in order to knock down the Colossi and then run everything else over by target firing with Vikings back in the day. Uh, but it definitely wasn't the intent from the start, but now that we're here, the Phoenixes are actually quite a uh, continued threat to Clem. The problem is the Phoenixes don't deal very well with, with buildings. Um, so Clem just kind of took a third command center and has about even workers, which does give him an edge as mules exist. So Clem, while delayed from all the shenanigans in the early game, we do see, oh wow, I was going to say he had a worker lead and now has a third CC already done, which is a significant advantage, but the Phoenix is starting to gain value and this is best case scenario. No Widow Mines, not really enough basic anti-air. Even Vikings and Cyclones have to be careful. Uh, the only units, like, Marines at some point get to be too high in number to be worth trying to take out. Yeah, the Viking getting caught. Cyclone locks on, but Max Packs really work at these Phoenixes. Roddy would be proud. Combat shield is finishing. A little outpost shield battery and a uh, cannon. At the third, whereas Max Pax following it up with even more tech. Chrono boosting a supply block Colossus. Oof. They will get most of the Chrono. He does need a couple. I believe one is done. Yes. There is no Raven with which to disable it. The Cyclones are potentially in danger. This army not nearly as scary as the army in the previous match. Oh, finds... Two reinforcing Metavax Club needs to boost those. 
He may have boosted them out to get this far, which sounds like a very Clem thing to do. Misses the opportunity to snipe the Widow Mine, but now Clem's kind of stuck out on the map. Does he go forward at this point? Oh, the Widow Mine slams in, killing two. And, and just like that, all the momentum of these Phoenixes shattered as they're all badly bruised, and Clem can lay on the aggression with the Phoenixes essentially nullified. There was a recall as Max Pax feels a lot more pressure to defend. Extended Thermal Lance, completing. And with it, the ability to keep this army at arm's length. One thing Clem does have is an armory done very quickly. And by very quickly, I mean at all for Clem in, in Terran versus Protoss. A lot of the time he does end up locked into a 1-1 uh, essentially all-in timing. Max Pack's not, not huge on the upgrades either here, as plus one attack is just now finishing. When you go for Stargate and a bunch of Phoenixes, and then Colossi, it doesn't leave you much gas for upgrades. But now adding on Templar Archives plus two, Clem will have a stronger heads-up army, uh, or at least in a fair fight. Well, Max Pax will do his best to make sure that fight isn't very fair. Uh, that's what sentries and phoenixes and good positioning on your colossi is for. But the phoenix count still down to four. He hasn't built any more. Enough to potentially pick off metavax and buffer for the colossi, but not going to be enough to be sniping dozens of SCVs or anything like that. Bit of an interesting situation here. We don't usually see phoenixes playing such a huge part of the early mid game and it has kind of stalled out any sort of aggression from Clem at least until he gets a few more reinforcements Phoenixes spot this that is another bonus is they're just very active units you can constantly keep tabs on your opponent and pick off anything out of position Max Pax at 69 probes a nice enough economy but he could use a few more to max it out. Clem opening up the map, making it easier to maneuver around. He definitely has the more mobile army, as Terrans often do. Charge lots in the back. Clem, most of his army just moved out onto the map, which is not an accident for Max Pex. He does have vision with an observer, so he saw when this was moving out, and in fact actually gets the mine that was helping to defend. Plus two, plus two, about to complete, though. And that should trigger an attack out of Clem, especially as he cleans up the charge lots at home. The EMPs land. Only a single shield battery. Without overcharge, it's going to be overtaxed and underpaid. I'm still looking for an opportunity. A lot of Vikings involved here, keeping them at range. Vikings looking to pick off whatever they can get. Only a handful of Stalkers. Blank is finishing up, though, and Disruptor's on the way alongside a second robotics facility. Observer's doing a good job providing vision, though he's stacked up a, a few extra on the other side. He sees at least where some of Clem's army is. Blink 10 seconds out. Plus two attack against 2-2 two -two for Clem. And he's got plus one ship weapons for those Vikings and maybe eventually Liberators. Building Vikings four at a time, by the way. Vikings not bad on the ground, but definitely more for the Colossi and, and Phoenixes. Clem has been forced into a more passive game. You can tell he's chomping at the bit here. He wants to get some damage done, but the death ball and death balls that Max Pax has been building have prevented that. Attack on the right flank. Charge lots and Archons to block. Max Pax rotating back and forth. EMPs across the board hit almost everything. Enhanced shockwave done for that radius increase. Clem adding more command centers. He's at 15 Vikings now. He's killing his Cyclones in order to free up supply for Ghosts, which is probably his best option at this point. He sends the other one to its death. Cyclones no, kind of just get in the way of your units now. The EMP dramatically outranges the Disruptor, especially when you consider how long it takes the Disruptor to fire. The Observer's doing a lot of work here. Max Pax probably wants to pick a fight soon. Try to get 
a fight where Clem's army is not so overwhelming. Unfortunately, though, Clem has been able to bring all his forces to bear. Here come the Archons. Haven't been yet exposed to the EMP, but there's a lot of ghosts here. Clem has really invested. The Vikings just sniped off all the Colossi. The EMPs are beautiful. Oh, Disruptors clip one, maybe two Marines. Another shot. At this point, Colossi are obsolete. Charge lots into the third, though. We'll draw Clem away. Still fighting at the front. Looking for more. Dodges all the Ruptor shots, but the Archons closing in. Stripped away of shields. One at five HP. Archons, nothing without their shields. Easily sniped, and Stalker Disruptor relies on landing the hits. The charge lots, though. Vikings on deck. Actually, we'll clean them up as the, as the commitment to Vikings is maybe a little overeager. Clem made so many Vikings, the Colossi were immediately obliterated. But now he has all these Vikings. And if anyone knows how to deal with Vikings, our Danish player should have the tools. Now, Vikings, the cleanup crew here, but not a very supply efficient one. Shield battery overcharge snipes on zealots warping in, which is something I didn't even realize you could do. Plus three, plus three finishing up, but Max Pax has been chrono boosting those upgrades and he'll be just about even on them. It's three, two versus three, two. Plus one, plus two ship weapons coming up. Yeah, EMP, those stalkers will evaporate the second the bio army turns on them. Splash damage is 100% required. DT blank, more stalkers. And now we'll see if Clem can dance. Oh, where did I did not? Oh, 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 Disruptor hit on the right flank. And suddenly it looks like Max Pax feels like he has the number. And he's right. He can close the distance, but the Liberator counts. The Liberators trying to get in there, but Max Pax. Oh, are there even enough Stalkers, though? Do they have Liberator range? They don't. Do they need it? The Venn diagram, the overlapping fields of freedom. Just locking out Max Packs. Vikings on the ground, also pretty solid at countering Stalkers with their bonus damage. Disruptors desperate to get anything done. But this base is just gone. Wow, he's just, yeah. Max Packs, a painful retreat. He takes some Vikings with him, but honestly, at this point, Clem kind of just wants to get rid of the Vikings. A blink behind, sniping off Liberators, but can he do it quickly enough? Looking for more shots. The Vikings dealing with the Stalkers so well. Clem, even though these are throwaway units, he can't seem to lose them because he's just too cost effective. All right, now the Stalkers can chase. Actually, surprising that he decided to fully pull up and get out. But Max Pex has to know. This is not all of the army. He is chasing for what it's worth. A Phoenix has survived throughout all of this somehow. But Liberator Range is on the way. The most obvious attack. Max Pax halfway across the map. He just recalled a minute ago. Still on cooldown for another minute. So now we're going into a incredibly awkward base trade. It feels like Max Pax kind of accepted this without really preparing for it. Kills some of his own zealots with disruptors. Clem closing in. One base down. Another command center forced to lift. The base at the center is a planetary. Liberators back at home. Oh, a lot of the DTs EMP'd, which means they lose their cloak. Another scan as the DTs retreat. DT blink is done, but you can only blink so much. Another attack. Disruptors fly out. Clem micros back. The Liberators don't protect this base. Another shot. A beautiful split. One Marine down. Orbital taken out. The main base actually defended by Dark Templar. And somehow Max Pax is, is slipping and sliding his way into a decent position again. But an, any amount of units at this new base. All the medevacs are here. Disruptor lands a hit. Another shot forces the micro back. The planetary under attack will not be repaired enough. Another shot as he staggers them back, covering his withdrawal. The medevacs did not warp in. He's looking for more. Stalkers, Max Pax is doing it right now. He's bringing it all back together. It looked like Clem would be able to close this out, but Max Pax outmaneuvered him. The kind of haphazard base trade has coalesced and consolidated into a coherent attack. We see more from the left flank. No disruptors, though, means he can't deal with the brunt of this army. 
Clem still has a much better fighting army and a heads up fight. It's, it's Max Pax needs to drag him into the disruptor shots and bring him back to his own bases. Yeah, Max Pax trying to go around. Clem goes straight up the center. Probes exposed. Another command center blunked upon and taken out. He does have building armor. Liberator range is done. Clem struggling to keep everything under control. Max Pax struggling to mine it all. That center base is so important right now. Recall is off cooldown. He can recall out. He may want to consider it very soon. Very soon would be the time. The DT char plot attack on the left flank. More shots. A fierce army, but he risks losing everything. He recalls out, but he doesn't get all the ruptures, which is a bit of a misclick there, I think. But Max Pack's actually ahead on supply. 20 SCVs down. EMP lands on the DTs, but the DTs can still blink over the top, and they do. Liberators are going to be forced to siege inside the main. Only one base left mining. The thing is here, at some point, Max Pax needs to face the army itself. Max Pax is going to need to beat the army itself. And that means landing disruptor hits, which Clem's still not taking. Some more SCVs killed. Down to 23. Clem's army at 100 supply to 65. One more Zella taking out turrets, which will be used to detect. Any of those DTs warped in. Max Pax has re-established two bases throughout this, going on three. He's got 68 probes still. And suddenly the incomes tilting in favor. Where did this Marine come from? I, I have no idea. But the income tilting in favor of the Danish Protoss. He has to survive. One more attack. He may have dragged this back, but there's still ranged Liberators closing in. There are no Tempests or anything to outrange them. He's going to be forced to blink probably underneath some of the Liberators here, but half of them are bruised. If he can just find the position, another base denied. At this point, why bother defending? Oh, a free Disruptor. Clem will take it and ask for seconds. The Nexus is canceled. Reinforcements being cut off. Clem mining from one base. Max Pack still technically has two. More warp-ins here. Where are the Rupters? Where are the Rupters? He fires a shot. Clem targets it down. He's trying to flank. It takes so long. Where are you going? Where are the Rupters? Max Pax needs them. He needed them yesterday. Uh, the Disruptor is getting caught out in the middle of the map. And suddenly it's Max Pax whose production is potentially under attack. Clem. Where did the Liberators end up? Many of the Liberators went home to defend. The stalker count at home is, is relatively minimal. This all depends on Clem taking a hit. At this point, Max Pax still struggling to deal with the critical mass of Terran, and Clem is not making mistakes. It's been a bit of an awkward situation. He's trying to keep Clem busy, but at some point he's up against his lap. Oh, 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 beautiful split. EMP across the board. Disruptor threatens to hit the Archon. Another shot. The Nexus under attack. Oh my god, he'll dance all day. It's beautiful. The split's incredible. He's tearing through everything. Clem making it look easy when in fact it's one of the most difficult parts of the entire game. Max Pax with his useless disruptors. All his Nexi either under threat or completely dead. Suddenly Max Pax down to about as many probes as he started with. He has no splash damage that can find a target. And now the bio army with its medevacs for all policy should be enough to clean up the rest. The EMP, I think he actually hit a couple medevacs with that. The charge lots are surprisingly effective here, but when the unit counts get about even, Clem can start individually microwing units in and out of his medevacs. Max packs down to 37 supply. This is it. It's over. Wow, Clem! Oh, Max packs to his slimy Protoss credit. Max Pax almost brought it back by just throwing the game into such chaos with the counterattacks, the DTs. But Clem, if you need, he needs to look away. He won't. He won't screw it up. Like 
disruptors work against Clem when he has to deal with DTs and three other bases. But when Clem is focused and he can bring all of his micro to bear, I mean, you saw what happened with the Reapers and the Adepts. Oh my god. That was a little disgusting. Well, that makes a match point. That means Max Pax needs three in a row. He's done it before. Can he do it again? Game three, Jimmy! Sorry. I hope you guys have enjoyed my commentary. Uh, like and subscribe and all, all of that and check out more. These two always entertaining. Uh, honestly, at this level, um, StarCraft has always been an insanely fast game. These youngins know that. But even thinking, even trying to keep up with what both these players are doing is a struggle. I, I like to consider myself a pretty good player. Been Grandmaster before, that counts for something. Um, but I find myself struggling just to observe what they're doing, let alone uh, try to replicate some of the micro and multitasking. And while multitasking is a bit of a misnomer, in SC2, since you can queue up commands, of course, and units, prioritization, I guess, is a little um, uh, efficient prioritization is the absolute key to StarCraft 2. Um, being able to confidently and precisely do what you think is important as quickly as possible. And uh, that is the reason why uh, younger players still have a tendency to shine. Uh, older players, like players like Zest and um, even like Hero Marine, uh, have a tendency to focus a lot more on either decisive mind games or, or very strong macro because uh, you can simply outplay more efficiently someone who plays faster. Uh, like a Rainer or Max Pax or Clem. Though, and that was one of Clem's big issues. And Max Pax has been, the comparison has been drawn many times of Max Pax to Rainer and Clem, as they both are just so fast, uh, as many young players are, that they would prioritize being fast over being soft. What that means is just constantly microwing marines or zerglings, even in situations where probably should have shifted the unit composition. Clem really, in, in especially 2020, really kicked off when he started playing a full-fledged Terran. Um, being willing to go past the marine medevac phase into ghosts and liberators and stuff like that when necessary, which isn't always required, but, and that makes him a threat at all stages of the game, as we just, just saw. So right now, Max Pax is showing that he wants to go for Stargate. He showed multiple adepts. It's a Stargate. Right, Clem? Right? No. That's the real fake here. Clem's making a Cyclone. You don't make a Cyclone uh, to deal with a Robo or DTs. Maybe DTs, but you'd much rather have Mines and a Raven. Max Pax is going for, it's like a psychological thing, is if you're not going Stargate, you usually go Stalker, because you have the gas. It's almost, it, it's becoming more common. I've seen Zest do this several times, and get the same response, by the way. Um, it's almost a, a bit, it's no longer a tell, I think, seeing multiple adepts early as Terran, because... So many Protoss are using it to fake a Stargate. But since the Cyclone is here, Clem's going to use it. Uh, it is a DT drop, but the awkward part here is since Clem took that... No, my... Oh, no. Wow, this is an absolute utter disaster. This is horrible. Oh, no. Oh, no, he can't lose that. Just that existing is a bit of a giveaway, but... Whoa, whoa, Max Pax has a... Uh, he doesn't even have a shield battery done. It's just now finishing. Clem started an engineering bay. Is he going to make a raven? Wow, he actually flips off the tech lab. He doesn't suspect... I think he suspects blink, is what we're seeing. 
the DTs still have potential because Max Packs has showed everything that it shouldn't be. He's shown, like, maybe it'll be a Stargate, and then he shows a War Prism. Okay, I guess it's going to be blank. Did he not save scans? He has one scan. He uses it. Wow, this still took Clem by surprise, which is kind of crazy to me. He had the opportunity to build a Raven. He decided he didn't need it. He had the opportunity. He had the NG Bay done. He decided he didn't need it. And now, Clem is actually scrambling to deal with the Dark Templar. Oh, my. That scan... Okay, that was really sloppy from Max Pax. You, you really don't want to lose two DTs to one scan. Even one more DT would deny mining at this base for another uh, 30 seconds or so. But Max Pax has, has pretty comfortably uh, created some space. There's no Raven, which means scans are going to be required. Though it is expensive to just continually warp in DTs. I'm surprised that there are none at home because Clem's just attacking. Like, Clem it's like, oh, you're not attacking me. I'm attacking you. <laughs> and that's how these two play. Yeah, this is quite sloppy out of Max Packs. Not having any DTs at home. He's, he's attacking with one on the other side, but there's a turret there. And now the third base, which looked pretty comfortable before, is looking a lot less so. He's trying to... Uh, the tank just killing stalkers here. Clem retargets a little. There's still a DT in the natural. It's getting real messy. Uh, yeah. Well, doesn't get the sight, Clem. Oh, but wait, more stalkers. An, an, an immortal? Okay. He gets the cyclone. The immortal barrier is triggered, but he still has shields. Goes back to the shield batteries, takes a sip. Uh, supplies are still pretty even. Remember, Clem's lost a lot of economy, both in not dropping mules because he needs scans. I'm very surprised that uh, Max Pax hasn't been warping in one or two DTs back at home. Just to force scans out of Clem. Like, there was a scan there. It got an observer, which is kind of lucky. <laughs> Clem, he has stim done and combat shields. He's been able to put together a pretty solid amount of Marines, despite everything. A Colossus is done, which we're all over the tech tree. The Marines will fight the Colossus, which was a ball by he gets it. No, I can't. Oh no. Wow. The confidence to see a Colossus with Marines and go for it. Oh, well. War Prism saves the day here. Max Pax, despite all this, he still got his third a lot quicker. And remember that Clem's economy, you're only now really seeing the effect. Is is Clem just doesn't have that much of an army. Because he traded all those Marines for the Colossus. He's still there. And he doesn't have a third. Which means, between all that, he's only able to put together maybe a couple medevacs worth of units. Now, Max Pax doesn't have that. He's only on three gates. Ooh. A DT coming into the third. The same one from earlier. The triple drop towards the main. And delays the third even further. Max Pax... Oh, no. Well, I think he realized what's happening here. We'll use a recall. He has energy. Three... Widowmines. One triggered. He actually gets the shot. You gotta be very careful not to lose a Colossus to Widowmines. Oh, my. Oh, my God. He's trying. He's really trying. But he loses his forge while... while sidestepping his Colossus away from the mines. And then he rebuilds the forge in the same spot, which... I mean... Maybe reconsider. And it, the Colossus goes down the Reaper Cliff. The Colossus employee entrance. A DT delays the third even further. The Vikings are hunting for the prism. There's no way that prism gets away now. Don't you dare recall that. Okay, thank God. Protoss have a really bad habit of recalling prisms that are still going to die. I've seen it so many times. A second forge as well. He really needs to make sure another drop doesn't happen. But Max Pax is still up 10 workers. The income heavily in his favor. He just needs the, the production, the infrastructure to bring it to bear. And you really need to have that economic lead on Clem. As you've seen him so far in this series and in general. Max Pax 
does not have any upgrades. He really needs the unit count and composition. Because right now, these Marines and Marauders are going to be stupidly cost-effective against anything that doesn't do splash damage. Armory on the way. Clem willing to fight this out. He's not going to try to all-in, nor I don't think he can he. Extended Thermal Lance is still 20-30 seconds out. He starts 1-1, one, one, does max packs. As well as a fourth Nexus. This charge lot... Wait. Yeah, charge lot. Being a little off means he doesn't see these coming, but does get a small scout. More charge lots to deal with it. And Widow Mines in a medevac. A classic. Armory is done. They will remain cloaked after firing. With extended thermal lands, it looks like Max Pax wants to get aggressive. The Widow Mine drops slipping by. No stalkers to deal with it. The worker lead has dissipated. Max Pax has not been building workers. And that may come back to bite him. We'll see when Clem remembers this. He hasn't decided on it yet. There is a Widow Mine. Gets a hit. Takes a bite out of the charge lots. Select an army key from Clem. There's no way that medevac is intentionally going back. Oh god, a Widow Mine drop. Could have been devastating to Max Pax. Charles Lance on the right flank. The Colossi. There's not quite enough Vikings yet. Blink is done. Yeah, there's no way that Widow Mine drop meant to be here. He's looking to box out the Vikings. The Archon's gonna help. Loses one Colossus, though. The mines will drop, making it look intentional. Another mine drop. <clears throat> there is EMP. EMP hits. Doesn't hit the Archons, though, which are the premium target. The command center itself creating issues. Max Pack's trying to press through. Only He doesn't have a probe lead here. He just hasn't been building workers. He's been focused on unit for... Ah! The stalker's stepping a little too far forward there. Two Colossi is not quite enough to bully your way in. And right now, with 1-1 one, one just now finishing, oh. Clem still holding the line. Max Pax wants to go forward. Does he have DT Blink? No, he's just building DT Archons. Ah, that's where they came from. Takes another mine. Hit the co command center itself, taking some hits. If he gets the orbital, unlikely, but a huge pickup if so. Oh, the dance continues. The stalkers blink back. There's a lot of ghosts here. EMP, a real and present danger. Disruptor coming up. But we've seen Clem. He is backed up into his base. There's almost nowhere to retreat to. The warp prism? Yeah. An afterthought. Will he... When does he fire the shot? The EMPs have been so effective. He hits, like, two SCVs, which who knows why... They... He's been repairing the Vikings in the middle of the fight this whole time. But once again, Clem holds the line and is chasing Max Pax across the map despite the strong aggression. The EMPs, he only has, well, he has a lot of energy. EMPs across the board. The Archon's boxing out the charge lots, but a shot? That one got a juicy hit, but is it juicy enough? Scan, clean up what could only have been Dark Templar on the other side. Once again, Max Pax is in this situation, stuck in his own base, reliant on disruptor hits. I'm surprised we even saw one hit. Vikings hit the deck. Strong against the stalkers that try to pick off any small amounts of units. A disruptor count at two. Clem has a fourth command center now. The Vikings easily take out any observers. Another Disruptor finds nothing. Second Robo on the way in a pretty vulnerable position, though. Max Pegs, uh, Disruptor, optimistic. Clem snipes one that strays a little too far forward. Another shot. Clips a couple ghosts. Good. But the supplies, look at the supply. Another blank to the left flank. It's mostly ghosts here, which stalkers could maybe pick off. But the EMP is whittling down the army. Whoa! Oh, the disruptor control just isn't there. The wayward shots. Almost hurting Protoss more than Terran. Another disruptor target and take it out. There's no reliable splash damage. There's no detection. Clem is, it almost looks like a foregone conclusion. The, the Widow Mines, he blinks. He gets away with one. Disruptor shots being used on individual mines. At least they don't get away. 
snipes. It feels almost disrespectful to be sniping zealots. I mean, come on. <laughs> Another disruptor. That's a juicy one, but he targets it. Another shot. One from the back. Not enough. He has to blink away, and, and he's just not winning this fight. Clem. By the way, he had another drop in the main. Just... Oh, wait. That was Vikings. Uh, oh, Clem. A decisive victory for the Frenchman. This... Some three O's are dramatic. Some 3-0s do not tell the story, but this 3-0, I think, did. Clem with a decisive win, 3-0 against Max Pax in this ESL Pro Tour match. And it bodes well going into the World Championship this year. Who has the best chance? And which underdog will take it? Or at least go far? Let's see. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. I'll see you next time. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Thank you for watching. Stay chill.